Um, could I uh, welcome all of you to this very informal uh, lunchtime briefing on the global consultation on inequalities as part of the post-2015 development agenda. I'm Carsten Starm, the permanent representative of Denmark, and we are, together with Ghana, co-hosting on the government level the consultations uh, which will take place in Copenhagen 18 and 19 February, that is basically in two weeks' time. Uh, and uh, on the UN side, we do have UN Women and UNICEF as the driving force and as the two agencies that are coordinating uh, and, and collaborating closely on the UN input to these, these consultations. Uh, first of all, as you know, uh, the, consultation, the global consultations that will take place on inequalities is one out of 11 rounds of global consultations that will take place over the next few months. I actually think, apart from one and I think Japan organized last year, this is the first this year on, uh, out of the 11. And that will be a very quick process, basically. They will then follow one after another until I think the final one will be the one that Norway is organizing together with uh, a number of partner countries, um, including Mexico and Tanzania, hopefully also, in Oslo on the 9th of April on energy. So from 18 February until 9 April, we do have a very intensive round of consultations on a number of thematic issues that are pertinent to the post-2015 uh, development agenda and which supplement, of course, the country consultation processes that are underway also. All of that will feed into two elements, basically both the high-level panel report. There was a meeting in Liberia last week and the high-level panel is shaping up now, but this will be a possibility in the final phase of the drafting of the high-level panel report to take account of some of these thematic discussions. And the other element where the thematic consultations will fit in is, of course, the Secretary General report at some point in time uh, on uh, the post-2015 uh, framework. <coughs> now, inequalities, um, as I said, we have uh, discussion here today. Uh, Richard Morgan of, of, of UNICEF will kick it off on behalf of UNICEF and UN Women. Uh, and then we have two, <laughs> two, uh, two uh, NGO representatives, and I'm just getting the right cards here. Vanny um, uh, Dugal from Baha'i International Community and Rosa Lizard from Feminist Task Force, uh, which will take a civil uh, society perspective on the on the consultation process, and then they will have, we'll have an opportunity to, to discuss it a bit. Uh, it's clear that there has been an, a very great interest in contribution, contributing to the process. It has been running for the past few, few, few months, feeding into the work of an advisory group, uh, which have drafted a synthesis report of the outcome, uh, and that has been made public for comments during January. And the report is now currently being finalized, and that's where the discussion here today fits in. Uh, the report will be discussed at a meeting in uh, Copenhagen, as I said, on 18, 19 February. And uh, there will also, in that context, be a high-level leadership roundtable on the 19th, where there will be 40 high-level participants, including 18 ministers from developing and developed countries, and four or five members of the high-level panel and uh, principals from some of the UN agencies, including UN Women and uh, UNICEF, to take part in that discussion. So basically, all that is the setting. The important thing now is to have a sense of where the issue of inequalities, how it will be discussed. It was one of the things that wasn't part of the MDGs as originally um, developed by uh, the UN in the late 90s. And uh, it has come up as one of the cross-cutting themes of great interest in a number of sectors. Uh, and there's been an intense discussion in, in, in over recent many years, actually, on how inequalities is to be addressed and how different sorts of inequalities are relating to each other. But to set that, to start that discussion, I pass the floor to Ms. Bani Dugal of Baha'i International Community. You have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Excellency. Um, and thank you, uh, Richard, and 
Sarachun. Colleagues, um, as uh, the ambassador and, and uh, Mr. Morgan uh, stressed that inequalities were not adequately addressed at the MDG process, so too we, we found that it wasn't as uh, inclusive and open a process as the one that the UN has embarked upon at this time. And civil society has uh, really welcomed uh, the outreach and I'd like to congratulate uh, UN Women and uh, UNICEF in particular in having reached out very broadly to um, um, NGOs all over the globe to contribute in various ways. So it has been a very inclusive process and the advisory group has, as uh, Richard mentioned, uh, uh, included UN entities and civil society networks and, and also the sponsoring uh, governments. And uh, it, uh, my colleague Rosa Lazarde and I represent uh, um, networks. I represent the Beyond 2015 uh, coalition, which um, is a global campaign whose aim uh, is to encourage a participatory and responsive process to influence the creation of post-2015 development agenda. And this campaign brought together 570 civil society organizations from over 90 countries to create a consensus around the process and the content of the framework itself to reflect the voices of those who are directly affected uh, by poverty and injustice. So this is just an example, just one member of the advisory uh, group had such a wide um, outreach. And, and then the process itself, um, you know, there was the two-part uh, consultation, the paper submissions, and uh, we had 300 abstracts that were received by the advisory group, of which uh, there were 175 uh, extensive background papers uh, received as of uh, January this year, and the papers came from PhD students, professors, academics at universities, UN specialists, NGOs, grassroots organizations, research organizations, think tanks, etc. So again, and, and across uh, the globe, uh, about 22% came from Central Asia and 16% um, uh, from North America, there was 13% from Africa and 11% um, from Latin America and a number, 10% of the papers had global representation of organizations that were presenting uh, the viewpoint of more than one region. So it was quite an extensive process. And then again, as has already been mentioned, there were these e-discussions that uh, focused on issues that had been drawn from some of the submissions that were made. And uh, so they too reflected, uh, you know, the, the will and the, uh, the desire of these um, individuals that were contributing to have further discussion and engagement on some of these issues. And uh, um, Rosa uh, from uh, the G GCAP uh, Feminist Task Force is going to talk in detail as to how one of these uh, e-discussions on gender equality came to be as Rosa was one of the moderators for that. But some of the others um, were uh, gender-based violence, um, people with disabilities, LGBTI, economic inequalities, indigenous people, young people, children and in, uh, inequalities, urban inequalities, minorities, and then there was also an expert discussion on measurement and the assessment of inequalities. And uh, these, uh, there were uh, about 1,375 responses from members of the public and um, 4,000 people registered to participate in this consultation and over 35,000 um, visits were made to the site. So uh, you can see the broad scope of uh, discussion and input that the report received because the report then uh, of course there was a, an independent expert that pulled the report together and did a, we believe a pretty fantastic job because uh, it was a lot of information that she synthesized uh, very well. So as you can see a huge amount of effort went into these uh, submission and uh, the Beyond 2015 uh, paper submissions serves as one example. We received 175 submissions. Uh, so 
that one paper alone didn't come from a single organization, as it were. And similarly, uh, many of the other submissions followed that uh, example. And uh, the, the paper, the one that beyond 2015 uh, 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 presented called for a holistic approach to inequalities in the upcoming agenda and made a number of recommendations for tackling inequalities um, such as inclusive economic policies, continued focus on gender equality, commitment to recognizing unrecognized minorities, uh, religious, ethnic, and caste disabilities, and that's only one example. Um, the advisory group worked together to bring a cohesive synthesis report of this uh, consultation, as I've already mentioned, and the report itself addresses the structural inequalities and the nexus between the inequalities and human rights, also economic, social, environmental, political, and other intersecting inequalities. And it addresses specific dem uh, demographics, and the report highlights poverty and inequalities, gender inequalities, minorities and disadvantaged groups, children and uh, uh, spatial inequalities as well, and ma makes a number of uh, recommendations. And uh, just underscoring what Richard said, we really, I mean, civil society, all of the papers emphasize as to how Im important uh, addressing inequalities is, and you know, they, it's critical that we do it um, at this time and uh, because the issue is universal, it affects everyone regardless of uh, whether they're rich or poor, advantaged or disadvantaged, come from the north or the south. And um, again, the, there was a great call for having inclusive uh, economic policies and, and uh, dealing with the root causes of inequalities. So while the report acknowledges that inequalities are reproduce through the interaction of discriminatory structures in economic, social, environmental, and political domain, domains. It also notes that tolerance of inequalities has allowed those in power to enjoy even greater advantage. And the report needs to, um, it says that we need to uh, together further acknowledge that attitudinal change is needed. And until these prejudicial and harmful or stereotyped attitudes um, held by individuals and communities and even institutions are transformed, discrimination will continue to manifest in the structures and institutions of society. And uh, again, I mean, uh, it was underscored that, you know, these uh, divisions between the us and the them and the north and the south and the donors and recipients uh, need to be erased and, you know, we have to view ourselves as one common humanity and one part of one shared reality. And this shift in attitude and perspective in our understanding and the relationships that bind us to one another may be the very crux of the articulation of a new development framework. So I think I'll stop here and Rosa is going to talk more in detail about the gender inequality discussion. Rosie, you can just keep, keep. <laughs>